we've been looking at the life and times of Joseph and all that he has been through. And he's been through a whole lot. One of the greatest feelings in the world is when you begin to see your storm is finally passing over. When you see it winding down and coming to an end, you've been in a blizzard for a while now. But when you begin to see things die down and there's a calm coming into your life and things are beginning to turn around, there's nothing like that. Amen. You learn to reverence and appreciate God more as you watch how he elevates and propels you into the next chapter of your destiny. Joseph didn't know that his dreams from God was going to take him on a lifelong journey to get him to where God was taking him. He didn't know that. A journey of hills and valleys. Can you say hills and valleys if you've been there? Yeah. <laughs> but he was going to arrive on time, just as God intended him, right on schedule, in the place where God had already predetermined for him. Amen. And everybody's journey, life journey, has hills and valleys. Amen. Amen. If you feel like you haven't had any hills or valleys, keep living. <laughs> they coming. Just as sure as you're born, the hills and the valleys. And guess what? By the way, they never end. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Two full years pass before Joseph's request is granted. When he tells, we saw it last time, when he tells the butler who was in prison, remember me when you get out of here. In other words, give me a helping hand. Help a brother out right. when you get out. Well, God causes Pharaoh to have a dream that no one can interpret. And guess what? Now enter Joseph. God was saving him for this moment. And when the time was right, he causes the butler to remember the interpreter who's in prison. Now, I want you to notice something. We'll look at it in just a second. I want you to notice that he couldn't remember Joseph when Joseph told him to. Amen. But he remembered when God caused him to. Amen. God sparked his memory. Two years later, right on time, to solve the king's problem dream. Somebody say, look at God. <laughs> Let's pick it up in verse 9. And it says, then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh saying, what is it? I, I remember, uh-oh, he remembered now. Right on time. I remember my faults this day. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, brought me, brought, uh, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream in one night, he and I. Each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now, there was a young Hebrew man. Here it comes now. We're on the verge of God turning his situation around. After he'd been going through for a while, all of a sudden, God intervenes. Amen. But it is in God's own time. Amen. Amen. 
is when God had a hookup for him. There was a man, there was a young Hebrew man with us there, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted our dreams for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream. Verse 13, and it came to pass just as he interpreted for us, so it happened, he restored me to my office and he hanged him. In other words, what he told each one of us, it happened just like he said. Right. I was going to be restored, but the baker was going to be hanged. Amen. And the way he interpreted it and said it, it came to pass just like, precisely just like he said. Right. Then Pharaoh sent, called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. Go get that man. And he shaved, changed his clothes, and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So his gift is in operation, and this man needs an answer, and he needs it right away. He's disturbed by these dreams. Who causes him to be disturbed? God. He messed up over this because God wanted him to be messed up over it. Because he's got a purpose and a plan for Joseph's life. Joseph is getting ready to be elevated, promoted. Amen. Joseph doesn't know that though right now. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. Look how he answers him. Before he says anything, look at his humility. He said, it, it is not in me. Guess what? He's not taking no credit. He's not taking no glory for what God has been doing through him. The gift to interpret dreams. It's not me. See, I got the, I got the point to God. Amen. Amen. However, whenever God uses you, always point to God. Amen. Always get the focus off of you. Because the Pharaoh, the king, is to focus it on him. Wow, what a man. Talk to me. No, no. It, it, it's not in my it's, it's nothing about me. Right. It's not in me. It's not of my own ingenuity, my own wisdom, my, my own humanness. No. It, it's God. Amen. We gotta always give God the glory that He Amen. richly deserves, folks. Amen. Look at your neighbor somewhere and say, "Give Him the glory." Amen. Whatever you are able to do, make sure you give Him the glory. Amen. Oh, somebody better praise Him right about there. Amen. It is not me. And he says, God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He's confident that God is going to give him an answer. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I stood on the bank of the river. Suddenly, seven cows came up out of the river, fine looking, fat, and they fed in the meadow. Then behold, seven cows came up after them poor and very ugly and gone. Such ugliness as I never, have never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the gaunt and ugly cows ate up the first seven, the fat cows. When they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were just as ugly as at the beginning. So when that happened, they didn't change. They ate up the fat ones, but they were still skinny and ugly. Right. Now this is something because Joseph is going to take all of this and interpret it. Now, only God can do that. Because when we were reading this, and if we didn't have a story, the rest of the story, we would, we would be rattling our brains trying to figure this out. That's right. That's right. Amen. So, his wisdom is not of human origin. That's right. <laughs> it is supernatural. Amen. That's 
-hmm. It comes from God. Amen. That's an awesome thing. It is. And the family is going to be impressed by this. Now, I, I could read all of this, but that, that, would, that would take a little bit more time than what I'm or, or trying to get into. But you can read that in your own time. But God had a specific time to bring Joseph out of prison. He was going to hook him up with the king. So that the king would hook Joseph up to the palace. But it took two years before the king would have a dream that needed to be interpreted. We saw it last time. Remember me! What? Two years. He remains and he waits. He may not come when you're Y'all know what that, that saying is. Yes, Lord. Don't be slow about it. <laughs> Somebody can testify. Amen. That he didn't come when I wanted him to. But when I really needed him, he came right on time. When he was down for the count, and the count was at nine, before the devil could count ten, you were back up on your feet. Amen. <laughs> in the fight again, and going for the knockout. See, that's how God works. He comes right on time. And a lot of times, this is how God was the sovereignty of God. He will let something get to his very, 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 very end. To where there's nothing left. You can be hanging on by a thread. And you have tied a knot in the thread that you're hanging on. And God will come just before you let go. That's the kind of God he is. He comes to your rescue just when you need him. Amen. Amen. I know somebody can testify about that. Never forget what he's done for you. Amen. When you come out of that dilemma, when you come out of that trial, when you come out of that tough time, when you come out of that time of confusion and debacle and living life in the shambles and God lifts you up out of that pit, out of that prison, Amen. and he's going to establish you into the palace. Amen. Because that's the kind of God he is. Amen. Right on time, God sparks the memory of the bucket two years later to propel Joseph into his divine destiny. Right on time. Yeah. And here's the point, when God decides to move, he moves quick. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Woo-wee. That's shout down right there. Amen. Been there, done that. <laughs> when he decides to move, after you've been wrestling all night long. When he gets, gets to moving, you have a hard time keeping up now. It will blow your mind. Because that's the kind of God he is. When he moves, he moves quick. He sends a suddenly. It does not take God forever to turn something around when it's time. Amen. Things can be going one way. You can have one mind one day and overnight when you wake up in the morning your whole view has been changed. It's like somebody turns on the light switch and you begin to see what you couldn't see before. That's how God works. He opens up your eyes. Your eyes are open now. The light has come. 
after being in the dark for so long. Amen. Amen. And you got to give them the praise for that. Amen. Overnight, God takes Joseph from problem to purpose. God uses his dreams to get him to his destiny. One dream gets him thrown into a pit by his brothers. But another dream gets him promoted into the palace by the king. Look at God. God uses Joseph to interpret Pharaoh's troubling dream. He also gives him the wisdom to solve the problem that will affect the entire nation of Egypt, the country. Answer to the dream and the solution to the dream. God is also showing himself to be the one and only true God to Pharaoh. Because none of Pharaoh's magicians could understand his dream or solve the problem of the severe famine that was coming. But Joseph, God's man of the hour, God's man through God's spirit, he was able to understand the dream, give the solution to the problem. Because that's how God works. Amen. When God does something, He does it well. Amen. <laughs> he doesn't leave no stone unturned. Right. He completes what He starts. Amen. Can somebody say Hallelujah right about that? I know that to be true. Look at verse thirty-seven. Let's read a little bit more. So the advice of, was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. The advice of Joseph gives the king. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God? Was? Look, at, look at that. We can't find nobody like this. He confesses the Spirit of God is in him. People ought to be able to look at you. Look at your life. Oh, we can get ready to talk right now. And associate you with God. And say, that's a woman of God. That's a man of God. God's Spirit is in him. Oh, God's anointing is all over him. They ought to be able to look at your life, look at your conduct, how you live, how you carry yourself, your commitment, your loyalty to God, and sum that all up about you. Just like they did, he did, the king did with, with Joseph. Amen. Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. Because he's coming up, he's telling the interpretation, he's told it, and he, he's got solutions for this. So, uh, verse 40, you shall be over my house. Promotion time. And all my all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne, I will be greater than you. Nobody will be over you except me. You're going to be under me. Notice how far he's gone. He was just in prison. Right. In the dungeon. The lowest part of the prison. Right. All of a sudden, overnight in God's time, He's promoted to second in command in Egypt. Wow. See, when God raises you up, he raises you up. Amen. Uh -huh. When he see, promotion comes from the Lord anyway. That's right. According to the scripture. That's right. He puts him over everything. Amen. 
only, you'll only be under me. Verse 41, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Now, if you look back to where he's come from, I think you would have to say it was worth it all. Amen. All that he's going through to get to where he's going, to get to where he is now, and it ain't over yet, it was worth the suffering. It was worth, hear me now, the heartache and pain. Amen. And see, when you recognize God's blessing on your life like that after you come through, that you'll be able to say that. And you ought to be able to say that. Look back and say, oh, I wouldn't trade nothing, like they say, for my journey. I wouldn't change a thing. I'll say it for my own self. All of the stuff that I've gone through, and I've been through a lot of things in my 62 years. I wouldn't change a thing. Amen. Because I am what I am. And I am who I am because of what I've gone through. Amen. Like I told you in the other, other installment, God doesn't throw anything away. God's not like us. We like to throw stuff away. We like to throw people away. Uh, oh, what? Uh, you've been there, you've done that. Oh, but no use for you. God doesn't throw anybody away, and he doesn't throw anything that we've been through away. He takes that, like I said, puts it in his pot called sovereignty, stirs it up, mixes it all up, makes gumbo, and he uses it for his greater glory. Because he wants the world to see, look what I can do with a mess. And the messier, the greater he can use. Because this is going to show everybody, yeah, this is going to show everybody that this is God. This cannot be done by a human. A human. Only God can do this. The supernatural ability of God to raise somebody to this level. He said, I have sent you, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have sent, uh, sent you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. So he's given him rewards to go along with his new official position that he's been raised to. This position of rulership, this position of authority, comes some rewards with this. And he clothed him with garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. So he's got designer clothes and he's got some bling. Bling. Some jewelry and some clothes to go along with your new position. Don't tell me God don't know how to bless. Somebody should have been and hollering right about that. God knows how to bless you. Amen. Like nobody else. Amen. And see, when the blessing comes from him, nobody can take it away from him. Praise the Lord. Verse 43, and he had him ride in the second chariot, which he had, and they cried out before him, bow the knee. So he sent him over all the land of Egypt. Don't miss that. Y'all hear my pages turn? Because I got to go back to chapter 37. And verse 9. 
Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream and this time the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bow down to me. Prophecy dream fulfilled. Some of it anyway. When they cry, bow the knee. Here comes Joseph. Dream coming to pass. He didn't lie. Dream coming to pass. It's nothing like seeing something come to pass when God has shown you a promise you something. Right. Seeing it be fulfilled. This is awesome. What's happening here in the life of Joseph. Then we move on a little further. We're looking at a total of 18 years of Joseph's life had gone by before he began to see God's ultimate plan for his life coming to fruition. 18 years. An 18 year long trek. 17 thrown into the pit, sold into slavery. Then he's got to go through what he went through in part of his house. I don't Thrown into prison for over life. Didn't do nothing wrong. Suffered. Really for no reason at all. But then there was a reason behind it. God's purpose. All these years go by. Remember me! Two more years go by. And then when he arrives before Pharaoh, we got 18 years have gone by. 17 to age 30. He's 30 years old now. He's gone through something. This didn't happen overnight. But when God did it, it erased, somewhat erased all of those years of pain and suffering and all of the trouble that he went through that was kind of heavy on his heart, heavy on his mind. I'm sure even an emotional wretch. 18 years not knowing, watch this, what the future entails. Because when he's in this eight, on the 18th year, can you imagine what he's thinking? I guess this is the way it's going to always be. I'm just settled in here. I'm going to keep serving God. I'm not going to change my mind about my journey and what he means to me. I'm just going to hang in there and I guess this is just the way it's probably going to be for me. But he didn't know that that blessing was right around the corner in that 18th year. See, you, you don't know. And this is one of the reasons why no matter what you're dealing with, what you're going through, you hang with God. Yeah. Lord, I'm not going in the town. Five years. I'm still here. If it's ten years, I ain't going nowhere. Fifteen years, eighteen years, stay right there. What if Joseph had a threw in the towel while he was in prison and say, you know what? It ain't worth serving God. I'm able to start worshiping these pagan gods in Egypt so I can probably get up out of here. What if he took on that mentality the day before the butler said, you know what, King? I remember a Hebrew in prison. 
He didn't, he didn't know when that was coming. He didn't know if that, he didn't know nothing about that. But God knew. That's why you always key phrase right here. Amen. Trust God. Amen. In everything. Trust God in everything. We being human can get off track and distract. Now it's easier said than done. Because if that has not come to your doorstep yet, you can say it. It can roll off your lips easy. But when trouble comes, say now. How you gonna talk now? What are the words coming out of your mouth now? When it's at your doorstep. When trouble comes knocking. You gotta keep on confessing. That God is good. Good all the time. Cliche. Amen. People can say that when the sun shines. That's right. That's right. <laughs> How many of y'all have said that and always say that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty. Yeah, I can just keep on going. Tell me you haven't said it. Good is good all the time. Yeah, while it's getting as good. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Let it go bad. And let me say to you, testify of the Lord's goodness. <laughs> what did you say the other day? What you, what, what you talking about, Willis? Gary Cole. All of a sudden, you got amnesia. You didn't remember that you said. Because why? Things are not going good. You be, should be able to say that should roll off your lips Amen. when you're down and out. Amen. That should roll off your lips when a storm comes into your life. Amen. When you are facing head on head in Paul's situation in the book of Acts, uh, your rock will die. That's the name of that terrible storm being kept. You still ought to be able to say, God is good even in the midst of this storm. Why? Because he promised me I was going to get to the other side. He promised me this night I would reach my destination. You got to believe that God's going to take you to the other side. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Somebody talk about this here all the time. So. 18 years has gone by. He didn't know he was going to be ruler in Egypt. Second in command. He didn't know it. Somebody say, he didn't know it. Just like, you don't know what's up the road for you. You, you, you don't know. We don't know the future. But we don't have to know the future if we know the one who is holding the future. I trust him. He has my best interest at heart. Yes, he does. Do you agree with that? Hallelujah. The dream unfolds right before Joseph's eyes. 
He's understanding everything that is taking place that did not make sense for so long. Here's the point, which deepens his relationship with God. It's nothing like coming through and going through and coming through. And while you're at the end of this thing, you see God in a new light now. It doesn't push you further away, it draws you closer to Him. Amen. Amen. Your relationship with Him goes deeper. Amen. Oh, I done got submerged in this thing now. After what He just brought me through and what He just done for me, I will never let it go. Amen. Amen. I wish I was multiplied by 50 right now. Oh, this is a new day. Ooh, wee. Somebody should have jumped right there because I felt that. This is a new day. Y'all got to catch up with me. Y'all got to go. His relationship is deeper. Somebody look at somebody else and say, we got to go deep. This is what ought to happen to us when God begins to turn things around in our lives. After we've gone through a severe trial or a series of trials. Who in here has gone through a series of trials? Can you testify? Amen. Oh, you're right now in the midst of currently going through a series of trials. Why in that transition is taking place? God is conforming you. He is changing you. Something is happening in you that has never happened before. I remember there came a time in my life, and I, I was saved at age 13, 12, 13, walking with God for years, was an evangelist on the streets at age 14, 15, 16, 17, winning young people to Christ, and a lot of them, by the way. I loved it. I lived before it. I told them before how I would go from one end of the town testifying and really preaching to kids. They would gather around and then go to the other side of Mount Vernon and do the same thing to get some more. By the time I went from one end to the other end, I had a group of people following me like disciples. I'm a teenager. And I'm doing just what, what was bu bubbling on the inside of me. Nobody told me to do it. I had an encounter with God, and the Holy Spirit compelled me to do it. Right. Don't tell me you can get saved and know God, get filled with the Spirit, and sit down. Oh, Pastor, go back to the other. Uh, no, I'm just going right here. Don't tell me that you can just sit down and be still. No. You got to get up and proclaim it and tell somebody. Somebody say, tell somebody. Tell somebody. About the goodness of the Lord and what has happened to you. Because you can't help but tell it. You can't hold it in. You can't hold it back. You can't put this fire out that's on the inside of you. That's burning. If there's the fire in Some folk don't have to fight. But I went from one end to the other end because I was filled with the Spirit, had purpose. Got sidetracked a little bit along the way, just like pretty probably I could say just about everybody in there. Amen. Amen. But don't hide under the seats. Everybody in here. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. But see, if the seed is in you, oh yeah, you come in full circle. Amen. You can't stay away too long. Because God has put that hook in you. And he'll never let you go. Amen. Getting that good news? Amen. And don't tell me he let you go. We let him go, though. <laughs> but he doesn't let us go. He will never let you go. Watch this. He will never leave you. But we preach on Pastor Paul. We will leave him. We forsake him. But he never leaves us. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. I come to appreciate what God brought me through. My relationship got deep at age 33. It got deeper. And he carried me to a place I had never been before. I never experienced God like I experienced him. And I been baptized with the Holy Ghost and, uh, and all of this. But it's nothing like coming through a trial and letting God deal with you and work with you and do something on the inside of you as you submit to his will while you're in that trial. Nothing like it. Because you'll come forth as pure gold and God births something new in you that had never been there before. And like I said, you plunge deeper. I love him more now, not less. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I know a couple of people that have been there. Amen. Amen. So we ought to go deep. Yeah. When you are committed and determined to stay loyal to God through your fiery trials, God will turn it around and things, here we go and I'm almost done, will get better. Amen. Right. Amen. Things will get better. Amen. Somebody help me out right there. Amen. I got to keep things for me. Amen. Amen. I, I know y'all have been through something, Amen. but did it kill your spirit on the inside? Because somebody ought to be yippee yay, yay, hallelujah, go, yes, amen. I'll get that done there. Let me testify, hallelujah. It'll put some joy in your soul. And see, that's what God wants. He wants us to testify and open up our mouths and not be ashamed. That's right. Amen. Not be dead about it. Shout it from the housetop. Amen. God is awesome and he is on the throne. And I'm not going to keep quiet like a dead rock. And ain't no rock going to take my place. Because I'm alive. Amen. Rocks are dead. That's right. But Jesus said, even the very rock will be raised up. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Let them rocks cry out. Because right. somebody going to testify That's right. and tell of his goodness. Amen. And like my aunt used to say, and make known his deeds. Glory to God. Amen. God knows how to give us beauty for ashes. Yes. Oh yeah, I can talk, talk, talk about that. Mm. He will give you beauty for ashes. Amen. Has he given anybody beauty for ashes? <laughs> I know I'm not alone. Somebody in the video probably shout right now. Go ahead and shout. Right there on your, in your house. Where we good. Because this 
is real. Amen. And it is as real as real can get what I'm talking about. Amen. God will change your night into day. Amen. And only God can do it. Right. We've just, we're not through yet. We got another phase to go through. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to deal with next time. But we're going deep next time. As we get to the conclusion of, of this story. Because God's not through yet. And he does some more stuff. And we will see the outcome of that in the life of Joseph. He's turned to night now. It's midnight in today. That's what God will do. Amen. That's right. I can testify. He turned my midnight into day. Amen. There you go, brother. Testify. Amen. Amen. He'll turn your midnight into day. Amen. But keep holding on. Keep trusting him. That's right. And watch the sun come up in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night. But put on your shout shoes. Because joy cometh in the morning time. Oh, that's good news. And see, as I finish, the good thing about nighttime is that it doesn't stay night. The, the night goes in. The good thing about nighttime is that the sun comes up in the morning. Last night, when you went to bed, it was dark. But when you get up, you look out the window, get ready for church, it wasn't still dark. What happened? The sun came up. And that's how it, what happens in our lives. The sun comes up in the morning. Hallelujah.